Hello to everyone, welcome to a new podcast of the Clouds of Witness in the Courts of Heaven. Welcome to a new week and I hope that you are very much interested in this insight of awakening to understand a little bit more about the mystery of the cloud of witness. This is your pastor, Yeti. Today I'm going to talk about death or the life. When we speak of the great cloud of witnesses, we are talking of those who have already transitioned into heaven. They are presently in a heavenly realm with a function to still see God's will done. Hebrews 12 verse 1 to 2 gives us the foundational understanding of this realm. And therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. These verses come on the heels of Hebrews chapter 11 where the people of faith who changed the world are spoken of with great admiration. These are obviously some of those who are part of this great cloud. The latter portion of Hebrews records some intrusion ideas for us concerning those who lived faithfully. Hebrews 11, 37-40 reveals insight into their past and present functions. They were stoned, they were swan in two, were tempted, were slain with a sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth. And all these having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Hebrew states this reality in leading into the next statements concerning our being surrounded by these who obtained a good testimony of faith. This is speaking of their place of influence and authority in heaven because of the lives they lived. The word testimony in the Greek is Martureo. It means judicial witness. When the Bible calls them the great cloud of witness, it is on purpose. They literally have a judicial function in heaven. They are not on a cloud playing harp somewhere. They are still function to see the passion of God fulfilled on earth. Two main thoughts. 
In dealing with the great cloud of witnesses and any contact we would have with them, there are two main thoughts. There are those who say we should never connect or interact with those who are already in heaven. They say they are dead and therefore we are forbidden to have any interaction with them. There is even a term used to describe this. Necromancy is defined as talking with the dead. Leviticus 26 is just one of the several scriptures where we are told not to have contact with the dead. And the person who turns to mediums and family spirits to prostitutes himself with them. I will set my face against that person and cut him off from his people. A medium is one who supposedly can call up the spirits of people who had died. They are called mediums because they stand between the dead and the living and become connections between the two. The next part of this scripture is very important, though. It speaks of family spirits. The ones the mediums are speaking with are not really dead people. They are in fact communicating with spirits or demons that are familiar with the person desiring to be communicated with. They were probably assigned to this person during their time of life on the earth. And therefore, they know pertinent information about them. They can therefore masquerade as this person's spirit to deceive people into believing they are taking to the real spirit of the person. This is what God declared several times in scripture that we are not to involve ourselves in as his people. The punishment was very severe. God said he would set his face against these people and cut them off as part of his covenant people. If we are any of our ancestors have had any to do with witchcraft, sorcery, fortune telling, or speaking with mediums, we must repent. This actually is a very serious indictment we need the blood of Jesus to cleanse us from this disfilment and accusations against us. When we read these kinds of scriptures, it seems to make it unlawful for us to connect or interact with those who have died. Yet the Bible says, this surround us, these surround us. It appears that they are very close to us. This word surround in Hebrew 12 verse 1 is the Greek word perikemai. i say it again, perikemai, to enclose and encircle. And it means to lie around, to hang out. They clearly are not an, on another planet or way up in heaven somewhere disconnected from us. The idea is they are close and even joined to us. They are hanging out with us potentially. Heaven is not a distant place. Heaven is an atmosphere in the unseen realm. It is a spiritual dimension. We transition into after our time on earth when we know the Lord and belong to him. We will discuss this more later further as I go in this insight. So how do we deal with the fact that God said we were not to communicate with the dead or interact with them? The answer is found in two New Testament realities. The first one is that those who are born again are not dead even when they die naturally. Jesus was adamant about this. Matthew 22 31 to 32 makes a startling declaration. Jesus, in answering 
the Sadducees, who did not believe in the resurrection from the dead, shows the power of God. But concerning the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was spoken to you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. The Lord after Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had physically died, declared he was their God. He was saying he was in a covenant relationship with them. Then he makes a statement, God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Jesus is saying to these religious leaders, you have it all wrong. Just because someone's physically body has ceased to operate doesn't mean the person is dead. The person is still very much alive. This is a true, especially of those who belong to Jesus and are in covenant with God through him. Even if the natural body ceases, the essence of who we are continues. We just transition into another realm of life. Jesus also addresses this truth when talking to Martha about Lazarus and his death. John 11, 25 to 26 shows Jesus clearly declaring that we never die when we believe in him. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? He told Martha. Do we believe that? Jesus himself stated that when we believe in him, we never die. Our physical being may pass away temporarily, but we go on living. Biblically speaking, we are not dead. Those who would want to label us who believe in the great cloud of witnesses are any encounters with them as involved in necromancy. Don't understand this. They still see death from an Old Testament perspective. When we enter a covenant with God through Jesus Christ, we pass from death to life. 1 John 3.14 proclaims we have left death and entered into life as is new creations. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brothers and sisters. He who does not love his brothers and sisters abides in death. John says one of the signs that this has happened is our love for God's people. It is a signal that we no longer are in debt, but we have changed places in the spirit realm. We are now alive and cannot die. 1 Corinthians 15, 53-57 defines for us the fact that death has no power over those who belong to Jesus. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall he, then shall be brought the pass, the saying that is written, that is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul is declaring that at the resurrection of the dead, we will give new bodies. Our spirits that never die will have new bodies that are compatible with the life we have. We will have bodies that allow us to function fully in the life that never dies, then that will fully be swallowed up in victory. It will no longer have any sting.
So the argument that we are speaking to the dead are being involved in necromancy is completely unbiblical. Those in the great clouds of witness are alive. The purpose of God. There is one other fact I want to bring to your attention. However, the whole purpose of God is to bring heaven and earth back together. Before the fall in the Garden of Eden, there was no division of heaven from earth. This is what made earth and Adam and Eve existence paradise. When Adam and Eve rebelled and sinned, the division between heaven and earth occurred. Ephesians 1, 9-10 tells us the intent of God. Heaven made known to us the mystery of His will, according to His good pleasure, which He purposed in Himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times He might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, in Him. God's intent through Jesus Christ is to again join heaven and earth together. This is the mystery of His will and what He has purposed in Himself. When Jesus died on the cross, the Bible says the veil was torn in two. Matthew 27, 50-53 tells us about this. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two form from top to, do- to the bottom and the earthquake. And the rocks were split and the graves were opened. And many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised and coming out of the graves after his resurrection. They went into the holy city and appeared to many. The veil being torn in two was not just humankind now having access into the holiest of holies or God's awesome presence. That is of great importance. But it is not all that happened. It's Monday, November 20th. When the veil tore... Live from NPR News in Washington. Alexa, stop. Excuse me for this. When the veil tore, saints who had passed away in generations, gone by very released from the bondage of death. They came out of their graves and appeared to many. They did this after Jesus' resurrection because he had to be the firstborn from the dead. Once he was resurrected, however, they came out of their now open graves. Their appearing to many was in essence one of the first encounters with the great cloud of witnesses. This was because in the beginning stages of heaven and earth being brought back together, the saints of old manifested the people still alive on earth. We have now, for 2,000 plus years, been in the process of heaven and earth, remerging together. This is why that before the climate returns of Jesus, that the climatic, I mean the climatic returns of Jesus, that will complete this merger. There will be increased encounters with the heavenly realm. God's passion to see heaven and earth back together again will be fulfilled. That which stood in the way of heaven and earth being joined together was removed as Jesus died on the cross.
The scripture forbids us to communicate with the dead. Leviticus 24, 6. And yet we see both Elijah and Moses on the Mount of Transfiguration. Matthew 17. Speaking with Jesus and the company of three disciples who were witnesses to both the encounter and conversation. Both Elijah and Moses had departed for glory long ago, but there they were. The scripture does not mention that Elijah died, ready was taken up by a whirlwind in heaven. 2 Kings 2 verse 11 But it is clear regarding the death of Moses. God himself said, Moses, my servant, is dead, meaning physically dead. Joshua 1 verse 2 We know for sure that Jesus would not rebel against the word and sin, as necromancy was punishable by death under the law. So what happened? Jesus declared, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? So I know this is a lot, but we need to think about all that. We need to pray and we know open our hearts for all this. There is much more for us given through Jesus. O Lord, may your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, and all for your glory. In Jesus' name. You're probably both going to have a lot of questions, but I'm open. As you know, you can write me. It's all open. It's up to you. You can talk with people you know. But there is more given to us that we really experience and accept that that is for us. So, uh, for the next on another time, right? I wish you a very good day. A very interesting day and I give you a lot of thoughts may the blessings of God be upon you this is your pastor Yeti bye bye